lectures by the St. Anthony of Padua Institute, a special event this afternoon as we present the first in what we hope will be a long line of memorial lectures to, dedicated to the Reverend Matthias Lute, about whom I will say a few words before I introduce our speaker, Dr. Anthony Clark. Reverend Matthias Liu died on 25 June 2008 at the Holy Family Community of Mont LaSalle, the San Francisco Provincialate of the Brothers of the Christian Schools, where he had been resident since 2005. He had been an affiliated member of the Institute, the Christian <coughs> Brothers' highest honor, since 1988. Father Liu was born June 2, 1919, in Paodang, Hopei, China, a village located some 50 miles south of Peking, and into the large Catholic family of Rose Lu, a catechist to the children of the village, and Paul Lu, in winter, a school teacher, in spring and summer, a farmer, and always a part-time carpenter builder. In a Catholic Voice article celebrating the 64th year of his priesthood, at that time the longest tenure of priesthood of anyone in the diocese, Father Lou recalled, I can say I was born a boy priest because I was born and lived in a house which served the missionary fathers as a house church. <clears throat> I learned the Latin prayers to serve mass, and in turn, I taught Chinese to the young missionaries newly arrived from France and Holland. At this same time, in my father's library, I found St. Thomas Aquinas' Summa Theologica, for which I experienced a deep fascination and irresistible attraction. Ever since, the priestly life and the scholarly intellectual life in me <coughs> are intertwined. As Father Liu was recalling his life as a boy of eight, we may infer that he was as precocious in his youth as he was learned, learned and wise in his age. We need not infer additionally that a European language, perhaps even Latin, was read in the house of the school teacher Paul Lu, a partial Chinese translation of the Summa Theologia by the 17th century Jesuit missionary Louis Budio was extant and would in fact be updated by the Jesuits of Shanghai in 1930. So Father Lu read his first St. Thomas in Chinese in all likelihood. Matthias Liu would, however, undertake the task of rendering modern translations of the Summa together inter alia with treatises from Aristotle's Organon, from the writings of the Apostolic Fathers, and from Justin Martyr, among others, into Chinese. He entered St. Vincent's Major Seminary in Peking in 1937. In 1938, he was awarded one of four scholarships allotted by the Society for the Propagation of the Faith to the Church in China for study in Rome. From 1938 to 1946, throughout the war years, Father Liu studied for the priesthood and then at the Pontifical Urbanian University. He was ordained in 1942 and received a licentiate in theology in 1944 and his doctorate in philosophy, concluding his studies under the great Dominican Cornelio Fabro in 1946. The Reverend Dr. Liu, as he was then, returned to China in 1946, appointed professor of philosophy and theology at Fujian Catholic University in Peking. That university was amalgamated in 1952 into the Peking Normal University, but refounded in 1960 in Taipei, as the, again, as the Fujian Catholic University. There, he was named to head a translation committee with the Boethian goal. I say Boethian goal because, as you may recall, until he had his head cut off for treasonable commerce with Justinian, Manlius Severus Boethius had as his, his uh, ambition to translate all of Plato and Aristotle from Greek to Latin. With the Boethian uh, goal of translating all the texts intrinsic to fundamental Catholic theology, that would be Aristotle, the Early Fathers, St. Thomas, St. Augustine, into modern Chinese translations for the sake of forming an indigenous Chinese clergy. In pursuit of that project, Father Liu left China in 1948 to visit departments of philosophy in the US and Canada, 
seeking to lay the groundwork for ongoing scholarly cooperation and support. He was stranded. His university forcibly amalgamated. The transit translation project dissolved, and he himself was denied re-entry into China by the 1949 victory of the Communist Party. Thus began a period Father Liu describes as, quote, a history of dislocation. It was a series of frequent displacements, multiple exiles, frustration, and suffering. It embraced a series of temporary academic appointments, research associateships, lectureships, visiting professorships at many institutions in the United States and abroad, St. Bonaventure's in New York, St. John's in Minnesota, and even briefly Notre Dame, where, as a graduate student in the mid-70s, I found that his name evoked pleasant recollections from the likes of Anton Hermann Kust and Boleslaw Sobchinsky. During the same period, he began the series of translations, and in particular, and this is particularly important, of innovations in Chinese ideography, which are the basis of his reputation among Chinese speakers. He, in 1963, he found a home at St. Mary's College, I think largely because by that time he had a library that was too big to travel, and he needed to find a place to keep it permanently, and also because within a decade he was one of the first computing folks. When the internet came about, Father Lu was already ready uh, to go on, it. and his, um, his life project, the Everyone's Aquinas Institute, had a web presence almost before anybody else had a web presence, and continued web presence with the aid of creaking, antiquated, really outdated uh, computer equipment for a decade or two. <clears throat> so he found a home at St. Mary's College, and more particularly among the brothers of the District of San Francisco, who, to their everlasting credit, sheltered him in his decline. When I was introduced to Father Wu, Lu in 1971, he was already deeply involved in the two causes which dominated his last quarter century, championing at the UN Commission on Human Rights and anywhere else he could get a hearing, the cause of persecuted Catholics, imprisoned bishops and priests, and oppressed laymen in China. He had seen the beginnings of the communist Chinese government's end game strategy, as he thought of it, namely co-optation and then submersion in the Chinese Patriotic Association in 1979, when at last, in the wake of the Nixon thaw, he had been permitted to visit his relations in China, including his mother in the year before her death. And I can remember vividly his conversation with me, in which, I think truthfully, he claimed that in the courtyard of the family farm in Baoding, there were 2,000, 2,000 people present for mass every day on three consecutive days. And that when the Chinese authorities showed up to shut the whole thing down, Father Liu, who knew his Chinese law pretty well, informed them that it was a private gathering in a private house, and they had no authority. Whereupon, as he tells it, they went away yeah. in 1979. Okay. Everyone's Aquinas, the second of the two projects that dominated his last quarter century, promoted the reading of St. Thomas on the premise that he is indeed everyone's Aquinas, a universal teacher who speaks to ordinary people and whose works should be made available to them. Father Lou did his best to see that that was so. The Reverend Dr. Matthias Lou became a U.S. citizen in 1969. He was awarded the medal Pro Ecclesiae Pontificae by Pius XII in 1939, and then 50 years later, the Benemerenti Medal by John Paul II in 1989 to fitting bookends to his career.